So today I wanna to discuss the goals of therapy in relapsing uh, multiple sclerosis. So over many years, there has been two different groups of multiple sclerosis physicians in their thought processes of how to treat relapsing multiple sclerosis. There's a group of the escalation that believe in escalation therapy, and there's a group that believes in induction therapy. Escalation therapy is where you start with lower efficacy, safer medications, and then if and when the patient breaks through, you will then increase them to maybe moderate efficacy medications with uh, moderate risk factors. And then lastly, if they break through there, then you go on to the higher efficacy medications that do sometimes carry with them some severe uh, risks or side effects. Um, for many years, the bulk of general neurologists, MS specialists did escalation therapy. Um, but more recently, the trend has been to look very seriously at induction therapy. I have been doing induction therapy in my practice now for about the last eight years. I strongly believe that induction therapy is superior to escalation therapy in the treatment of multiple sclerosis. I believe that the inflammatory component of the disease is significantly more present early on in the disorder, especially the first three years, than it is later on in the disease. So if you're during the inflammatory portion of the disease, when the disease is, has significant inflammatory issues, when you have the patient on a low efficacy, safe medication, it's very likely that they're gonna break through, leading to relapses. More relapses lead to greater disability. Um, but if you can shut the disease down very well with a high efficacy medication early, you can then possibly de-escalate therapy later on in the disease course. I believe that this is the preferred method. There are very good studies going on right now that are looking into this. I am, of course, hopeful that they agree with my thought processes, and I truly believe that they will. Now, unfortunately, even with high efficacy treatment, or the low efficacy treatment, the escalation or the induction treatments, uh, patients still continue to break through and have relapses. And that's because there's still so much yet to learn about multiple sclerosis. This is a very powerful disease. One thing that I have said to my patients and I've said to other MS specialists, we need to be more fearful of the disease than fearful of the treatments because the disease is powerful and definitely can lead to relapses. Now for patients that do have relapses, there are multiple different treatments that you can use. By far the most common and by far the most used is IV methylprednisolone or IV cytomedrol at a dose of one gram Q day for five days. And for most patients, they do relatively well with this. But there is a decent number of patients, uh, possibly as high as 40% of patients who do not have a good response to this treatment. Either they develop side effects from the treatment or they uh, have an uh, incomplete response. For those patients, we have other options. Uh, the other options include repository corticotropin injections or the brand name of Acthar. We have plasma exchange treatments and we have intravenous immunoglobulin treatments. Um, the uh, Acthar dosage is 80 units subcutaneous or intramuscular for uh, five to 10 days. Uh, we have been stuck with the five-day theory for many years because that's what we get for Cyumedrol, but I truly believe that for Acthar, patients do better if they receive 10 days. And actually the FDA approved dose is two to three weeks of this medication. Um, for plasma exchange treatments, I usually have the patients receive five plasma exchange treatments over a period of seven days. Uh, they usually were hospitalized for this until recently. I'll get to that in a minute. But they were hospitalized by, um, uh, they were hospitalized as follows. They would receive two treatments, have one day off, receive two treatments, have one day off, and then would finish the last day with the treatment and go home. And after their line was, was removed. So this was a seven, this was a seven day hospitalization. But with now this COVID-19 pandemic, we are trying to keep people out of the hospital as much as possible. 
So I have been able to work with my nephrologist and switch my patients to outpatient PLEX treatments in which um, they will receive the same course that I mapped out earlier, this, uh, the same dose, dosing strategy of five treatments in seven days, but they will be remain at home during this entire time. The only disadvantage to that is that the permanent dialysis catheter is somewhat more painful because it is tunneled catheter versus the temporary dialysis catheter that they have in the hospital. As far as IVIG treatment, this is very controversial. There aren't very good studies that show that it clearly is efficacious, efficacious in the treatment of uh, MS relapses, but there certainly are anecdotal experiences of myself and other physicians that do say that this can be helpful, but this is definitely my third choice and it's way down the line. Now, as far as repository corticotropin injections, I was a lead author of a poster that was presented at Actrums in February of 2020, which uh, turned out to be the last medical meeting possibly in the entire United States before the COVID-19 epidemic hit. Um, and uh, this study is a real world multi-center perspective study in which patients received ACTHAR to treat relapses. The study revealed that ACTHAR led to clinical improvement measured by patient reported outcomes and EDSS measurement. Um, the primary endpoint was a change from baseline at month two and at month six in the MS impact scale. Also, we uh, looked at the EDSS and the clinical global impression of improvement scale, the uh, CGI1 scale. So basically we treated 125 patients. They were a little bit older than most patients are being treated with relapses. They were 47 years of age. Their average time that they had multiple sclerosis was approximately 10.2 years. 58.4% um, of patients had experienced a relapse within the last two years. And 60% of these patients had a history of insufficient treatment response, intolerance, or limited intravenous access associated with high-dose cortical steroids. So after treatment of uh, ACTHAR, the uh, MSIS physical subscale scores decreased from baseline by eight points at two months and 9.64 points at six months. And both of these were highly statistically significant. The mean EDSS score decreased from baseline uh, by 0 0.37 at two months and by 0 0.45 at six months. And again, this was also highly statistically significant. The CGI scores improved, it indicated improvement in 63.4% of the patients at two months and 61.4% of the patients at six months. So basically the conclusion of this study was that results from this prospective uh, observational study of repository corticotropin injection in patients with treatment refractory MS showed a clinically meaningful improvement in the MSIS 29 physical subscale scores, as well as statistically significant improvement in the clinician rated scales, the EDSS and the CGI, which supported the efficacy and tolerability of RCI as a treatment for MS relapse. So in general, what this showed in patients, this was a real world study in patients who were having relapses, who received ACTHAR, some of them received five doses, some of them received 10 doses, it clearly showed an improvement in both patient reported outcomes and in clinician related scales. In patients who received 10 days of ACTHAR versus patients who received five days of ACTHAR, there was improvement in their scales in terms of the uh, both the patient related patient related outcomes and the clinical scales that was a trend that was exciting to see but did not reach statistical significance because it was a small subset this is a very exciting uh situation for me because i've always wanted i always reevaluate my patients when they're seen seven to ten days after their relapse, and if they do not have a complete response, I very commonly will place them onto uh, ACTHAR treatment or consider PLEX treatment for them. 
I think we need to be have a higher expectation. I think we need to have a higher expectation of how our patients are going to respond from their relapses than we did previously, since we have better options now than we had earlier on.